Welcome to No More Bad Mondays. I'm David. And I'm Matt. And we're here to share ways to get Microsoft 365 working for you. This is the first part of our video series, Use Teams for Everything. In this series, we're going to walk step by step through streamlining the management and employee experience by using the Teams mobile app as a powerful hub, bringing as many different operational functions within easy reach of every single employee as possible. If you're a business, regardless of size, and you're using Teams, but you don't use updates, company dashboards, planner, announcements, or power apps, then this course is not to be missed. This is going to help you get the most of the tools that you have within Teams, but you're probably not using. Of course, if you already use some of these tools, do keep watching as it might help you improve your setup. And if you're not using Teams at all, keep watching to see what you're missing. Remember, if you find this useful, hit like and subscribe and head over to nomorebadmondays.com for courses, support, training materials, implementation plans and much, much more. Speaking to lots of businesses and organisations, we've noticed that there's many who are using Microsoft Teams but don't even come close to realising its full abilities. It's particularly noticeable in SMEs and education, where time is short and system expertise is scarce, or it's provided by external company. I agree, yet it's exactly these smaller organisations that would probably benefit most from a powerful, easy to manage, one-stop shop that can remove a load of management hassle and deliver central functions directly to everyone's phone. If this sounds a bit like your organisation, we understand the issues. Your business comes first and it's not a priority to investigate whether it's worthwhile making changes to Microsoft Teams, even though it might save you time and money in the long term. Well, we're here to help. In this episode, we're going to walk you through a comprehensive but simple to manage Teams install as used in this business so you can see whether it represents a time and cost saving opportunity for your organisation. If you decide it's a worthwhile investment of your time, in the following episodes, we'll take you step by step through creating an identical setup in the simplest way possible. The objective of this series is to keep it quick and simple and to get you up and running fast. Right, before we start, let's talk about cost. Or lack of cost. Yes, if you have staff who are not currently licensed from Microsoft 365, it doesn't need to cost much. The cheapest license is called F1, it's less than £2 or just over $2 per month. Do however check with Microsoft for current pricing. This basic F1 license is perfectly good for employees who will use chat rather than email and they don't need Word, Excel or the other Office apps. Of course if you have employees who use Microsoft Office online then they'll already be licensed and it won't cost anything extra at all. And because we're talking about licensing per employee per month costs are completely scalable and will change with your staffing. So for example, seasonal businesses don't need to carry the same cost throughout the year. And of course there may be savings on other software because teams can replace it. Okay, let's crack on and see this in action. First, let's look at dashboards. Right, dashboards are front and center of the Teams mobile app because the dashboard shortcut on the Teams app carries your logo and your colour scheme. It really brands the Teams app as you. The shortcut is where people will find three important tabs. They get a page of clear graphical buttons to take them to your most important processes and guidance, like maybe fire procedures and accident books. You can also target these buttons so they only appear for the employee groups who need to see them. A second tab on your dashboard is the news feed. The news feed is a curated space where you can put your big organisational news stories. So this isn't like chat where important news can get hidden amongst all the chat messages coming through. This is a place where you can put really nicely presented news stories with images, fonts and colours that really pop. And again, you can prioritise and target these stories given you control over exactly what everyone is seeing. Yes, audience targeting is an important part of this. The final dashboard tab is resources. Resources is a place where you can put all of your bulk information. For example, your employee handbook, all of your HR policies. All 350 of them, of course. Also detailed industry guidance, links to external resources, and so on. Yeah, this really moves a lot of your intranet onto employees' phones, making it super easy for them to access. A massive 
a bonus to holding your information in this way is that you are making your organization AI ready. When Microsoft Copilot AI is released for your organization, which is likely to be next year, information held in this way will be in the right place for AI to find and use, and Teams will be one key way to access it. Yes, this is a really important thing to do right now, when we're on the cusp of some big changes because of AI. Okay, let's move on to updates. Updates are the way your staff can submit checklists, reports and forms to their managers. They can be highly structured with a list of tick boxes, checks and questions with predefined drop down choices or they can be as free throwing as written reports or they can be as mixture of the two. Updates can be submitted on an ad hoc basis or they can be scheduled against an individual person for completion at a predefined frequency. Scheduled and structured updates are particularly useful for making sure that legal and safety requirements are met because you not only get to define exactly the questions and available answers, but you also get a very strong audit record of the date, time and person who completed the update. Yes, a great example of how flexible they are is the accident report where maybe you've got the description of your events, checkboxes to say whether treatment was required, drop downs to identify location, etc, etc. Alongside the hugely useful ability to attach photos and videos of the accident site. Right, next is a big one, shifts. It's a fantastic feature that not everyone fully understands. Essentially, it's a planning board that allows you to create shifts for your employees. And once these shifts are published, your team members can see and receive notifications about when they're expected to be on site. They can use the app to clock in and out, and it even uses geolocation to ensure that they're doing so at the right location. It's incredibly powerful. You're right. Shifts can be a game changer, not just for managing payroll, but you can use it for various purposes like tracking numbers for insurance needs or monitoring the number of people on site for fire procedures, even scheduling people in the office days when they do some home working. There's more to it as well, such as open shifts. You can publish a shift that any of your employees can pick up, subject to your approval. You can even let them swap shifts amongst themselves, again, subject to management approval. This flexibility lets your staff handle some rescheduling amongst themselves, which can free up your time as a manager. Of course, you still have control and oversight, ensuring your team functions smoothly. That's right. As a manager or owner, you maintain that vital oversight. You can see everything happening in real time, right in front of you. It's a brilliant tool for keeping your team organised and efficient. And let's not forget that Shifts also handles leave requests and absence. It really does streamline the entire process of workforce management. We move on to tasks now. Now tasks is a lot more than a personal to-do list because of its integration with Microsoft Planner. Matt, you use Planner a lot. Tell us what's it, what it's about. Well, it's more of a project management tool. You can create different plans for various projects, making it easier to organize your work. You can break down projects into smaller tasks, assign them to a team members, set due dates and track progress. Yes, and the beauty of Microsoft Planner is its simplicity. It doesn't overwhelm you with complex features or jargon. It's user friendly, making it accessible to everyone, whether you're a tech pro or a, or a tech beginner. It's really friendly, really, really friendly. You can get a visual board when you can see all of your tasks at a glance. You can categorize them, prioritize them, and even customize labels to suit your needs. But it's not too simple. You can leave comments, attach files, and have discussions within every task. So in a nutshell, whether you're managing a small project or something more complex, Microsoft Planner helps you stay organized, track progress, and collaborate. And its integration with Teams means your staff consider it to just be part of the whole Teams experience. Okay, let's talk about chat next. Chat might seem straightforward, but there is some best practice you should make sure you're following and also some hidden gems that people might not be aware of, like, for example, urgent notifications that ping your phone like crazy for a short burst, which can be incredibly useful and irritating. <laughs> we'll also dive deep into audit in chat conversations. If you ever need to find out what's been discussed for any reason 
or perform keyword searches, we'll show you how to use the admin systems within Office 365 for that. It's not something you'd ideally have to do often, but when you do need to, it's absolutely essential. And finally, we'll explore Power Apps. Power Apps are incredibly versatile. They can handle virtually anything. If there's a task or functionality not covered with the tools we've discussed so far, Power Apps could likely do it for you. We hope this video gave you some useful ideas about how teams might work in your organization. And if you feel like you're missing a trick, don't miss the rest of the series, where we'll walk through how to set up Teams Mobile just like this. Please use the comments for any questions or thoughts you have, and don't forget to head over to nomorebadmondays.com for courses, support, and more. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.